Okay, so we are going to talk about rational exponents today. Um, if you have um, a number in exponential form like this, and you've got an exponent that is rational, right, meaning like it's a fraction, right, you can write it in radical form like this. So what ends up happening is this denominator of the exponent becomes the index in radical form, okay? All right, so if you have something like this, a to the power of one over five, this will be the fifth root of a, okay? And here, if you have eighth root of c, well, that's just c to the power of one over eight, okay? Now, <clears throat> so that's if you have like a reciprocal exponent. Now, if you have rational exponents, what we said is the denominator becomes the index, and then the numerator becomes a power, and you can write the power either inside the radical or outside the whole thing. So let's take a look here. Oh, come on. Okay, so here we go. So here, this number will become the denominator, and this number will become the numerator. So this will be c to the power of negative 5 over 3. Okay? And we'll talk about what to do with that later. Here, again, we're going to make this into a radical. The denominator becomes the index. And then the 7 will be the exponent. So you can either write it like that, or you can write it as 4th root of d to the power of 7 like this. Yeah? Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this one. You have 49 to the power of negative 1 over half, 1 over 2. So first of all, are you allowed to have a negative exponent? No. So what happens to this then is... This will be 1 over, oopsies, 49 to the power of 1 half. So then this is 1 over, this is a root of 49, right? So if this is a denominator of 2, this will be a square root. And so that will simplify to 1 over 7. Okay? Here, this will be the fifth root of 32 to the power of 2, right? So look at this 2 over here. If I put it next to the 32 and I have fifth root of 32 squared, that's too big a number. But if I put the 2 outside, then I have the fifth root of 32. I can simplify that and then I can do that. So fifth root of 32 is 2, right? This is just 2 to the power of 2, that's 4. Okay, yeah. Is there a reason why you're not writing it in, in just that form? With like I just said that because 32 to the power of 2 is too big a number and I don't want to deal with it. Okay, so here, cube root of 8 quantity squared. Okay, so inside, cube root of 8 gives me a 2 squared. That's a 4. All right, here I have a negative exponent again. So what am I going to do? Take the reciprocal, right? So this is going to be 25 to the power of positive 3 over 2. Don't go flipping the 3 over 2 as well. Okay, just change the sign. So now this is going to be the square root of 25 to the power of 3. Root 25 is 5 to the power of 3 is 125. Okay. Because you can't have a negative exponent. The negative 3 over 2 is a negative exponent, and you're not allowed to have that. So you have to take the reciprocal, right? If this is 49, you make it 1 over 49. Mm -hmm. This is 1 over 25. You want to take the reciprocal, so it's 25 over 1. Okay? We made that 1 over 49. 
to the power of a half, which is the same as 1 over 49 to the power of half. Okay? All right. So what if you have um, expressions with radicals? Or with, uh, sorry, with rational exponents. Okay. When you're done simplifying, this is kind of, um, I don't want to say it's like, it is black and white, but sometimes students are like, you know, how do I know when I'm done simplifying, right? So here is how you know when you're done simplifying. Once you've simplified, you have to make sure there are no negative exponents. You have to make sure that are, there are no exponents that are not positive integers in the denominator, right? So you can't have, for example, like, you can't have like a fractional exponent in the denominator and you can't have any negative numbers in the denominator. Um, you have to make sure there is no complex fraction and then the index has to be the least number possible. Okay, so it's a lot of words, but let's see what that means. Okay, so here, the first thing I can do here is I add the exponents, so I get 5 over 7. Okay, now, I think one thing I forgot to put in here is when you have a fractional exponent, right, a rational exponent, it has to be a proper fraction. It can't be an improper fraction. Like, you can't have an exponent of 7 over 5, but 5 over 7 is okay. Okay? Huh? Do we not have 5 over 7? Yeah, we have 3 over 2. Yeah, but because we had it more than four to one. But okay. what do you do if you have it? Okay, that's what I'm teaching you. Hang on, I'm going to teach you. Okay, so, um, so here I have a negative exponent, which is not cool, right? So this is going to be 1 over x to the power of 2 over 3. All right, but now remember what we said um, in the denominator, the exponents can't be fractions. They could just be positive integers. So to make that into a positive integer, I multiply top and bottom by x to the power of one-third, x to the power of one-third. Okay, why one-third? I have two-thirds. I want to make this a one. I want to make this three over three. So if I have two-thirds plus one-thirds becomes three over three, that's why I multiply by one over three. So finally, here I have x to the power of one over three over x, okay? So this turns into x to the power of three over three, which is x to the power of one, which is x. Okay, here. That's it, you're done. We're done. We're done, right? Because that's fine. No negative exponents, no improper fractions, no uh, fractional exponents of the denominator. That's how it, we're done. This, okay, let's do another one. Here, we're going to simplify top and bottom separately here. So I have sixth root of 16 but 16 is really 2 to the power of 4, right? Make it into its lowest base. And then here I have cube root of 2, okay? Because I had a base of 2 here, that's why I also knew to simplify the 16 into a base of 2. Now, I need to rationalize this like we did yesterday. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cube root of what? Uh, two squared. And here too, cube root of two squared. Well, because I need a total of three. Remember what we were doing yesterday? So I need two more. Right? Okay, the top we don't care about. We just care about the bottom, remember? So, what is this now? Six, eight, two, eight, nine, 
So I have a two here. What do I have on top? Okay, sorry. The big problem here, this is a six root, this is a cube root. So I, sorry, I was in a zone. This is a six root, this is a, uh, a cube root. So we are going to start in the same way. Sixth root of two to the four, cube root of two. Now, because these have different roots, the way to get over that is to write this in fractional exponent form. That means we have two to the power of four over six, two to the power of one over three. Okay? Now, if I simplify, this is 2 to the power of 2 thirds, right? And 2 to the power of 1 third. Is that right? So now, if you have the same base and you're dividing, what do you do to the exponents? Subtract them. Subtract them. So finally, I end with 2 to the power of 1 third. Okay? So here is how that works. Okay, so I'm sorry, I, my brain wasn't functioning before. So because you have different roots, this is the way to get around it. Okay? Yes. Isn't that just a cube root of six? Yes, you can write it either way. Okay, so here. All right, here. You have six root of four x to the four. So here's what you can do. You can't really, you don't have enough to take anything out. However, there are ways to simplify this if you write it as fractional exponents. So this is sixth root of two squared x to the four. Now, this is the same as two to the power of two over six, x to the power of four over six right so now this is two to the power of one third x to the power of two thirds you can leave it like this or you can write it as cube root of 2x and if you and if we go back here what we said here is that one of the things has to be that the index is the least number possible. When we started out here, we had an index of six, but look how we reduced it to the three. Yeah. So oh, it's two x squared, sorry. Why do you have to split it up like that? If you, can't you just like, Okay, I can only answer one question at a time, please. Go back and, Oh, because, uh, yeah, I'm sure the thing that I did, I never got, I did, still had four there instead of two X. Okay. Okay, other questions? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Um, how did you take them out of the radical? How, yeah, how did you take them out of the radical? So, this, um, this is the same as six root of two squared times six root of X to the four, right? So this is two to the power of this over that two over six, right? X to the power of four over six. Okay, and then you simplify these fractions. Okay, so here, look at this. I have, you know, y to the power of a half minus one. This is another conjugate situation. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. The problem in this question is... I am not allowed to have any fractional exponents in the denominator. So it's that y to the one half in the denominator that's an issue. It's the same as having a root in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply y to the half plus 1, y to the half plus 1. Okay, so let's see what I get here. In the denominator, right, in the denominator, do you see how I have 
a minus b, a plus b. So I can still do the first one squared minus the second one squared, okay? So that will be y to the half squared minus 1 squared. Okay, in the numerator, we're going to FOIL this. So the first terms will be y to the what? Y. y. Just y. Plus outer terms y to the half. Inner terms y to the half. Last terms 1. So I have y plus these two together is 2y to the half plus 1 over y minus 1. And that is how we're done. Okay? Now, if you want to write it as 2 root y plus 1, fine. But that's, that's all you can do. Okay? Yeah. How did y to the power of a half square root? You tell me. What do you do when you square something? What do you do to the exponent? Multiply. When you square, you multiply. Okay, we're not going to do that, okay? Okay, so here. Um, okay, the problem here. Okay, what is the problem here? We have fractional exponents in the denominator, right? So we have to get rid of these. All right, so what we're going to do is this. We're going to deal with each of the variables separately. So first, let's deal with the C. So we multiply top and bottom by C to the power of something, and we want to add a fraction to this to make it a 1. What am I going to add to this to make it a 1? One? 1 half. 1 half. So this will be C to the 1 half. So C to the 1 half. Okay, now let's do the B. I have a one-third here. I need to add something to make it a one. Three over three. So I'm going to add two over three and b to the two over three. So now, in the bottom, I have these two c's. When I add the exponents, I get c to the one. And I have these two b's. When I add the exponent, I get b to the power of 3 over 3. I get a b to the 1. Okay, hang on. Now, let's take a look at um, what do I have here? c to the 3 over 2. And what about B? Huh? Oh, because okay, I get it. Because you have C to the one plus C to the plus C to the half. Yeah. Okay. Let's let me answer that later. Let me finish this first. Okay. And then what about the b? I have b to the what? 3 plus 11 over 3. Okay, but now, okay, now, do I have any improper fractions with my exponents? Okay, so look, and then I have multiple c's everywhere. I need to combine them and make one c. So what can I do here? Can I subtract those exponents? Yeah. So I subtract those exponents, c to the 3 over 2 minus 1, b to the 11 over 3 minus 1. So what do I get? C to the... Eight over 3. You still have an improper fraction, so what are you going to do? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is c to the 1 half, and then take a look at this b, right? What happens when you divide 8 by 3? It's how many? 2, remainder, 2. So this becomes 
V. What what does that become? Huh? So what is this? This is the cube root of b to the eighth, right? Mm -hmm. So what will it be? Um. What happens? How many b's come out? Oh, two. Two b's come out, and how many stay? Oh. Two. Whoa. Okay. So I know it's a lot, um, but okay. So here's the thing about this problem. Right now, when we learn how to do it, we're just learning the skills of what we can do with these exponents. And it's very much out of context, okay? But as you go further and further in math, right, you'll see that, like, these will all be part of another problem, and you'll see what, like, how much you need to simplify in order to suit your needs, okay? Hang on. So, for now, here's, these are the things we're going to stick to right here. So, make sure there are no negative exponents. That's a big one. Okay, make sure none of the exponents are negative integers in the denominator and make sure no fractional exponents in the denominator, no complex fractions, and then, you know, reduce the indices. Oh, that's sweet. Not fractional exponents. Okay, all right, why don't we start on homework?